Hello everybody! Yes, it's time once again, so welcome to the channel. You know what to do. Before we start talking about how cool big block Chevys are, go up into the corners and do the like and the share and the subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when I do all this testing like every day. So you know what? You don't want to miss out. So you got a project car. You're thinking, Richard, I need a cool motor for my project car. Yeah, you could do what everybody else does and put an LS in it. And yeah, that works. Or you could be really cool and pick a big block. That's right. I said what I said. But not just any big block. If you're going to get a big block, you want it to act like a big block. So if I go to the wrecking yard and get a big block, how do I make it perform, you know, like a big block? I'm going to show you exactly that, and then we're going to take it up another two or three notches. Okay, guys, I'm gonna, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to show you how to take something that's awesome, which is a junkyard big block Chevy, how to make it more awesomer. <laughs> and then we're going to go up the ladder, successive steps to make it even more awesomer because we're going to add boost to it. And which you think, yeah, that's probably pretty good. A boosted junkyard motor and a cammed one, that'd be really good. Yeah, but we're going to take it to the next two levels above that, which is pretty cool. So we started out with a 96 and up Gen 6 454 from the wrecking yard, originally came fuel injected. I like these Gen 6 motors. They have a factory hydraulic roller cam. They have a good head cylinder head on them. Small chamber, 102 cc's, big oval ports, not the peanut ports. And as I said, the hydraulic roller cam came with port EFI. Before we put this on the dyno, I did what we normally do and we get rid of the EFI. You could run the EFI also, especially in this combination, but we did it as a blow through carburetor. So to get this thing ready for the dyno, we installed a, we took off the factory EFI setup. We put on an Edelbrock Performer RPM air gap, a 750 Holley. We have the dyno headers that we always run. And then we put an MSD distributor. You could also use an HEI from the wrecking yard. But here's a pro tip on the HEI stuff. If you get one from a wrecking yard or any of the factory ones, make sure you're, you're probably going to have to limit the total advance on these things. Some of these HEI distributors have 40 or 50 degrees of centrifugal advance in them. And it's just way too much to get any kind of good curve. So make sure that you take a look at that. And, you know, you <laughs> if you have between 10 and 15 degrees of initial, you're probably only going to want another 20 or 25 degrees of total so that you can play with it and get it right. But at any rate, we didn't have to worry about that. We had our MSC distributor. We ran our carbureted deal first on the engine dyno in naturally aspirated trim. We had a comp extreme energy, or actually, I take that back, an extreme marine camshaft, 547 lift, 230, 236 degree duration split, at 112 degree lobe separation angle. We did do a valve spring upgrade, although I would I want to science out another valve spring kit for these because this beehive setup that I did with rotator eliminators was right on the verge of coil bind, or we had trouble with the the rockers contacting the valve tips, depending on how you um, you know we raise the retainer up and stuff. So it was a whole big deal. I want to science out a whole new deal for those so we can get a good valve spring option for these things. But run with this camshaft, our carbureted and can 454, produce 427 horsepower and 476 foot-pounds of torque. This is, you know, kind of typical of what we normally see when we run one of these can versions of the Gen 6. But this was our starting point. So what we wanted to do was now the best way to add power to these things. You know, you can do a cylinder head upgrade and take manifold and all these things. But let's face it, the easiest way is just to add boost. So that's what we did. We added a Vortec YSI supercharger. I'm going to go ahead and move myself up here in the corner. See the curves better. So we have our NA baseline versus the Vortec supercharger. The couple things I liked about the Vortec, um, the rising boost curve was kind of cool. You can see we're continuing to make power all the way up, all the way out at 6,000 RPM. But we also had a cog pulley set up on it, so I didn't have to worry at all about any sort of belt slippage. Um, there's nothing more frustrating to be, than to be doing testing and having seeing the boost curve either level off or fall off out at the top and then, and then see belt dust and stuff because the belt is slipping. This was nice, cog pulley, perfectly repeatable, you know, boost curves and stuff. So this actually worked out very well run with the Vortec and I'm going to I'm going to show you guys the boost curves at the end of all of this so you'll be able to see this we made 790 something horsepower 792 or 3 and 713 foot pounds of torque so you can see the adding the blower and the other change that we made to work with the blower is we put a CSU blow through carburetor and bonnet on it 
I know, I'm rhyming, but no, no intercourse. So we just did a blow through deal and we were running um, a combination of pump gas and race gas on this combination. And you can see it worked out fairly well, but we're not done yet. So let's take a look now and see what we did the following upgrades. We're gonna add an intercooler to it. Yes, I know, an intercooler on a carbureted combination and we're going to do an aluminum cylinder head upgrade, which is <laughs> recommended on any big block, if for no other reason than big block iron heads are just really, really heavy. Okay, guys, you can see we had our naturally aspirated junkyard cammed 454, and then we had our Vortex supercharger and blow through carburetor from CSU, and that combination worked out very well. We're getting, you know, kind of dangerously close, <laughs> getting up near 800 horsepower, which is good. But, and, and this is a point of contention with a lot of guys that are doing blow through things and they, they and, and we get the same thing, uh, comments with the guys that have E85. Well, I'm running E85, I don't have to run an intercooler. Or I'm running a blow through carburetor, I don't have to run an intercooler. And my response to them is always an intercooler is always a good idea. <laughs> it's always beneficial. Even if you're running methanol, it's always beneficial. The, but the thing that I can say is guys that are running methanol, are, are seem to be a lot more concerned about vehicle weight and the weight that the things that you need to run an ice water intercooler, you get gains from it, but it also adds weight. So at the higher levels of drag racing where you probably would be employing methanol, maybe there's a trade-off balance there. Hey, we're adding weight, but we're adding power. And maybe there's a net neutral, or maybe it's a slight loss or only a slight gain. And it's just not worthwhile. But for any kind of street car and stuff, I almost always recommend uh, an intercooler. And I wanted to demonstrate what happens uh, on a carbureted blow through application when we do an intercooler because it still adds power. And here's what happened when we added the intercooler. We put this air to water intercooler, show you a photo of it. We put an air to water intercooler. We were running dyno water through it. And all we did was put the intercooler in place. Um, you can see that, and you'll see this when I show you the boost curves. So the boost actually came down, but the power went up. <laughs> so, and you will see a drop in boost, not immediately people think restriction on an intercooler, but the reality is the boost will come down because of a change in temperature. And we are seeing a change in temperature. In fact, we're knocking more than 100 degrees out of the air before it goes into the carburetor. So it works out pretty good. But with this combination, we made 845 horsepower, 843 horsepower. So it did fairly well. So even on a blow through carbureted combination, we could make that combination better with a supercharger. This would work with a turbo also, but as a blow through combination, if you put an intercooler between the supercharger, or in this case a Vortec YSI, or a turbo and the carburetor. But we're not done yet. <laughs> so there's one more modification. So far, we have just employed our Vortec, Vortec YSI supercharger and now an intercooler on our cammed big block but we've been using the stock cylinder heads this whole time. So the stock heads that came from the wrecking yard, the factory iron Vortec heads, and let's face it, they work well, but they're big and heavy and they're iron. So adding an aluminum head is a good idea for on two fronts. One, extra flow. Normally, if you're gonna get an aftermarket aluminum head, it's going to flow more than the factory head. In this case, the Brodix heads that we put on here definitely flowed more. Also, it's aluminum, so it's gonna help with heat dissipation and it's gonna uh, reduce the chance of detonation. This is very, very important if you plan on running all of this stuff on pump gas. The other thing that happened here is the factory Vortec heads, again, I mentioned very small chamber, 102 cc's. Well, the Brodex heads had 119 or 120 cc heads, so this also lowered the compression, which makes it an interesting test. We increased flow, and we lowered the compression, so what was the change, what was the change in power? Well, obviously this combination liked the extra airflow because now we're up over 900 horsepower and over 800 foot-pounds of torque just by doing the head swap. So the head swap going from the stock head to the Brodix head, and we saw this NA too. It lost a little bit of power down low from the compression, but gained power up top from the flow. We saw good gains in this RPM range with the head. So the cylinder head lowered boost, <laughs> lowered compression, and lowered the chance of detonation. So it did everything good on this combination. So it just goes to show you. When you add a supercharger to a junkyard big block Chevy, obviously good things happen. You put a, the CSU kind of carburetor, you could run it with the EFI. Good things happen, you can make lots and lots of power. But you can make it even better 
when you run an inner core and a set of aluminum heads. Okay, guys, very quickly, as promised, we have the booster supplied in the different configurations of our supercharged junkyard big block, starting off with just installing the Vortex supercharger as a blow through application with the factory iron heads and no intercooler. You can see we rose from around five pounds up to 19 pounds. Here's what happened after we installed the intercooler boosted dropped slightly by down to a peak of 17.7 pounds. And you can see the change kind of grows with engine speed. And here's what happened when we installed our Brodex aluminum heads boost dropped even more down to 16.4 pounds. And you can see as we, in one of them, we obviously added maybe a little bit of a restriction, but definitely dropped the temperature down going from the non-intercooled to the intercooled version. And then we made the motor quite a bit more efficient, which brings boost down. And as we saw from the dyno results, power up with our aluminum heads. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.